Okay, hello. <clears throat> my name is Mo, and I'm practicing Taekwondo in my backyard. Well, right now my driveway, once I mow my lawn, I'll be in my backyard. I uh, have been practicing Taekwondo for 15, 16 years. Uh, I'm a student of Grandmaster Kai Hacho, who uh, chose karate, Houston, Texas, on Westheimer. Um, anytime before you practice any exercise, make sure you check with your doctor to make sure you're in good enough health, especially if you're practicing outdoors. And uh, if you're practicing outdoors in the heat of Houston, make sure you drink plenty of water, okay, because it's very hot and you de dehydrate quickly. So uh, this segment is reviewing basic stances. Uh, I'm an ins uh, a s a instructor level at Cho's Taekwondo. I assist in the classes. And oftentimes students will ask me if there's something to go online to look at, so I decided I need to put something online in YouTube so they can watch. So here we go. Uh, the four basic stances we're going to go over is riding stance, front stance, back stance. We'll talk about common mistakes and how to, what the best form is. Now, there's many styles of Taekwondo, uh, many styles of martial arts, but uh, they all have slightly different styles. What I'm going to show you is what uh, Grandmaster Kai Ha Cho teaches at his dojang in Houston, Texas. Uh, so, that for being what it is, uh, chariot means attention, feet are together, your knees are not locked, they're just a little loose because you want to be able to move. You don't ever want to lock your joints because it puts undue stress on your ligaments. Uh, when you're standing at attention, also your feet being together, that helps your balance in that close uh, position. Hands are at your side and if you want to make use of your time, wise use of your time, uh, make your fingers, tighten your fingers together, tuck your thumb in, practice this when you think of it, when you're in the chariot or attention position, and you'll be making wise use of your time. Also, when you're doing this hand position, if you curl your fingers slightly, not a lot, just a little bit, that helps you keep your fingers together. Also, when you tuck that thumb in, bend it and actually tuck it in, that will also help you to keep your uh, hands tight and together. Another thing you can do if you are uh, standing in line or something like that and have nothing to do, you can gently tap your hands together, tap your uh, palms, and what that does is uh, you'll feel, you know, if your fingers are not together, you'll feel it. They'll jingle against each other, jangle, and sometimes they'll sting a little bit. But if you just practice that and you're hitting with this padded part of your hand. So if you practice that, that will help you to have those tight fingers for all of your forms when you're doing any kind of knife hand guarding or uh, knife strike or spear finger, anything like that. So, chariot position, practicing the knife hand. Chung B, step left, feet come shoulder width apart. Here's your shoulders, there's my feet. Hands come up, nice and tight. Fists, hands come up. Again, this is Grandmaster, he had, Grandmaster Kai Ha Cho's method of uh, Chung B or get ready position many other different styles. Okay, tight fists. On a tight fist, you roll the fingers down and thumb is on the outside, okay? And aiming with two big knuckles if you're ever punching, okay? Straight wrist. Okay, hands high. Not drop like this. Held up nice and high. This strengthens your arm muscles, shoulder muscles, chest muscles, and your hand muscles if you're keeping your fists tight. L knees are not bent, they're loose. Most common mistake in this position is dropped hands or feet too wide, legs locked. You want your feet shoulder width apart, knees a little bit loose, and hands high. Okay? That's get ready position. Next, stances. Riding stance. Step out to the left more, about two shoulder width apart. We're going to do riding stance, lunge punch. Pull in your right fist because you're going to hit with the right fist. This is a chamber position. The left is out, the right is in. As you hit right, the left comes in. Okay, that is each time you chamber. If you're pulling one in as you're pushing one out, you're going to use your core muscles, and that's an important part of this. Also, if your legs are not bent, lots of times people will start out with a riding stance, and then they'll stand up and lock their legs. Or another common mistake is the same thing, too wide, legs are not bent. That doesn't serve you. That doesn't really strengthen your body. You want to bring your feet in, about maybe two shoulder width or shoulder width and a half apart. Bend those knees. 
You don't want to be leaning forward. You want to keep your back nice and straight. Okay? All right. This is the position here, riding stance. 50-50. The weight's 50-50. The toes are pointing forward. Shoulder back. Good posture. Okay, everything straight to the front. Okay, and then the punching. Each time you punch, you pull the other hand in. Each time you punch, you exhale. These are good habits to begin right at the beginning and to continue all the way through your practice as long as you practice. Okay, that's riding stance. Next, from the chumbi position, front stance. Front stance, let's go left leg first. So you step your left leg forward, bend the left knee, back leg straight, hips, shoulders, everything is square to the front, toes pointing forward. If you have to, you can put your foot, foot outward, but that tends to turn your body this way, and you don't want that. You want to practice all your stances in the full position. If you practice in the full position, then any, any positions in between will be easy to do. So this is the most extreme position. It's the most difficult to do, but it's a matter of self-control of your mind, training yourself to do it over and over again, and eventually it becomes relatively easy. If you need to, you know, you can... Um, well, yeah, most, one of the common mistakes on this position also is that the, instead of, instead of keeping the, the feet shoulder width apart, like this, people will step in and the feet will be too narrow. And this way it's, it's almost impossible for you to turn the, the body around this way. So when you step forward, make sure you're leaving a good space between about, um, Christine Show, who uh, used to teach me, said uh, enough space for a big bowling ball to go through. I, I sometimes say, like you're riding a horse, you want enough space between your legs so that you have the stability. You want to keep your knees bent because that's also stability. That anchors you to the ground. It gives you uh, stability. Okay, uh, in this position, a punch, you would have your right hand out and punching with your left, the right comes in. Or if you're doing a down block, these are the chamber positions, your right hand is out, your left hand is up, and you block as you chamber in with the opposite hand. Okay, so that's front stance. And as you're moving forward in this position, same thing, don't bring your foot in, keep your leg wide, wide enough apart like this, back leg straight, front leg straight, I mean front leg bent, and your weight is a little more to the front than the back. Okay, that's front stance. Next, <coughs> back stance, which, you know, I would obviously be moving towards you, but uh, in this case, for visual clarity, I'm going to do the back stance going that direction there. So let's see, so I'd be in a chumbi position. Okay, chumbi position. I would turn this leg out and Line up the heels, step out, maybe a shoulder width and a half, something like that. Bend both knees. I'm looking in that direction, I'm moving in that direction, my toes point in that direction, this knee is bent in that direction, but everything else is pointing this way. All right? Now, most common mistakes on this, people will be too forward. That's a little easier than keeping 65 or 70% on your back leg like this. It's, it's a difficult position, but it makes your whole legs, knees, everything strong. Okay, another common mistake is legs too wide and um, straightening that front leg. Right here, my weight looks like it's in the middle. It's not on the back leg, really, and I got my front leg straight. So I want to pull that in a little bit, bend both. Okay, keep the, well, again, you don't want to lean. You want to stay erect. Okay, and in this position, the chambering is high for knife hand striking, okay, uh, inner forearm block, nice high chamber, okay, or um, knife hand guarding, all high chamber. So see, chamber, strike, chamber, strike, chamber, strike, okay, that's back stance. Going towards you, it would look like this, so chumbi position. Step, chamber, strike. 
So you should see the person's shoulder, their face. But, you know, if I'm like this, I'm not doing the position correctly, back stance correctly. Shoulder, toe, knee. So, so you can't really see what I'm doing with this hand. You don't really know what I'm going to do with this leg. And the weight is definitely 75, 60% on this leg. It'll really strengthen your quadriceps muscles, okay? So we did, we did riding stance, 50-50. We did front stance, where the weight is a little more to the front, everything's square to the front. We did back stance, where, you know, you're showing the person the skinny view, and the rest is pointing to the side, okay? And 65-70% on the back leg, uh, very 30%, 35% on the front leg. As you're moving forward, too, which I didn't say on this leg, you shift the weight, you shift the weight to the front, and then the front becomes the back. So you leave the majority of the weight on the back and you bend the front knee. That's how you move forward with this. So you see shift, let me go back in. <clears throat> so I shift the weight to the front, turn my foot, step. The weight is now on my back, the front's now the back, and the front leg has less weight. <clears throat> Last stance, ah, fighting stance. Okay, so. Um, from a, from a chum B position, okay? Fighting stance is more relaxed. The fists are tight, but not tense, relaxed. Because you wanna be able to move fast, so you gotta keep your body relaxed, okay? Your feet are not too wide, your feet are in a comfortable position. You wanna be able to move, okay? You wanna be able to move forward, back, side to side, okay? And the, uh, one hand is kind of blocking the face. You know, you block, you, your hands are in a position where they can block just about any direction pretty quickly, okay? You don't want your hands down because it's harder and takes more time to block from a down position like that. When your hands are here, you're really ready to, you know, block whatever way you need to. Outer forearm, inner, rising, down, whatever you need to do. And as you change positions, you just keep those hands nice and tight. Keep your elbows tucked in. I mean, they don't have to be like this, but you don't want them out because you want to protect your side. Okay, so that's fighting stance. So I think that's it. That's the four basic stances that you first learn in at uh, Cho's Taekwondo from Grandmaster Kai Ha Cho. Review. Chumbi. Excuse me. Chumbi. Okay. Riding stance. Be front stance, okay, front stance, back stance, fighting stance. Oh, you step your. I chose taekwondo. When you do fighting stance, step your leg forward. Okay, your left leg forward or your right leg forward, whichever. You just step forward. You don't step back. It's a fighting stance. It's a an offensive, an attacking position. You're ready to fight. You're ready to kick. Okay, so that's segment one, reviewing basic stances. My name is Mo, and I'm practicing Taekwondo in my backyard. If you want to learn uh, anything more about me, or you would like to access, access some of the uh, things that I offer for free on my website, I'm an artist. There's blank cards, booklets, art lessons, songs. It's all free. <clears throat> you can go to www.expandingheart.com Again, expandingheart.com Just the way it's spelled. Expanding Heart. Okay, so till next time, peace, love, and happy practicing.